Hey guys, welcome back to the Merchant Services Slayers Group. Again, my name is Carson Cook, and today we're going into video three, or part three, of the introduction to Merchant Services. So all the people out there that are getting into processing, this is a great video for you. Uh, my film crew is telling me to like slow down, I talk too fast. So if you need to at any point, please pause this video series, or pause the video, rewind it, and rewatch it, because that's how I speak, I apologize. But at the end of the day, today guys, we're gonna be talking about part three, which is how to sell. Now you can go into um, a lot of different ways on selling this product, okay, whether it's over the phone, lead generation, sell prospecting. I've boiled it down to three different important tips that are going to help you in any situation, no matter what merchant services product that you do sell, these three tips are gonna help you, especially if you're getting in the industry, which are kind of your mile markers of what you need to really focus on, guys, in this industry to make sure that you're successful. Three different things, okay? Um, shameless plug here too, guys, if you do wanna check out more sales videos on how to sell, not only just processing everything else, check out the CSO Pro, I hate to say that, uh, shameless plug, the CSOPro.com, I'll put a link in the description below, get more videos, more sales content, and so on and so forth. So getting back to it, how to sell. Okay, in merchant services, three different things. Number one, which is probably the most important thing to understand, is that your processing company, whether they're new, they're a, let's say they're even a fly-by-night company, they're gonna stick around for a year and a half, whatever. If they've been around for 20 years, doesn't matter. Whoever it is, guys, that has recruited you and brought you into the company usually has a system that has been designed over many years to sell this product, to sell credit card processing. And too many times, even with our ISO or recruiting, people come into this process and they don't follow the process. You are 40% more likely to succeed, not just in merchant services, but in sales or any job anywhere, if you follow the company's given process. If you follow the CRM, even though the steps might seem to you as stupid, this is ridiculous, I don't wanna do this, I have 25 years of experience, I'm gonna do it this way, you are missing out, man, you are missing out. The day you stop learning is the day you stop selling. Okay, again, follow your company's process, you're 40% more likely to succeed with that company in that selling that product or their product if you follow the process that's been given to you. So make sure you go through your training and if you're in processing right now, you're doing okay and you're 10 deals a month and you've been with this company a year and a half and you didn't really go through the training, call your manager up, say, hey, put me through the training again. Let me spend a night, go through this one more time, make sure I'm not missing anything. Follow your process. Number two, understanding that credit card processing, again, if you go to video one, is very competitive, right? Very competitive. So the thing that will get all that competition out there is to understand is that this is not just all about a sales process. Yes, the sales process is foundation is extremely important, but I have never had anyone buy merchant services for me without buying me first. I like to have conversations, I like to qualify, I like discovery, but I don't just like discovery with my merchants on the fact that I need to help them save money and beat up their current company. I like to get to know them, okay? That is grease to the gears in your sales process, especially in the competitive environment within merchant services with a lot of rejection, a lot of crap, um, a lot of just fake objections, a lot of real objections, just a lot of crap, a lot of stress, a lot of tension, right? And to give oil to those gears, you need to push your merchant back. You need to think about not closing the deal so damn much and focus on 100% rapport. If you focus on 100% rapport in your sales process, you will sell more deals. Which brings us to number three, is that we need to stop being so price conscious. That is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest selling points in our industry, is selling price. We need to stop selling price and stop selling savings. What we need to do is we need to start selling other value added services and not stop selling price and savings, but sell the feeling of what those savings and the price drop will do for them. Not what it will do for them, but also how that individual or the organization will actually feel once they have those savings. So if you wanna sell savings, you gotta sell it right. You're not selling savings, you're selling a number that doesn't work. You gotta sell what that number would mean to them. You need to bring that up and bring that pain and that feeling up before you even give them an idea of what you're selling or give them your, your, your savings analysis or your, your price deck or whatever the hell you wanna call it. Before you present that, you need to build value in that savings. You need to build value in your program, in your value added services, in your gift card program, in your rewards program, in your online marketing program, in your credit program, in your, in your, um, your MCA loan program. You need to build value in that first before you even decide to display that to the merchant or even on the phone or before you just give out a quote. 
because quotes are a waste of time. They pile up and nothing ever gets achieved from a quote. Okay, what happens when merchants sign is when they get qualified for something and you present it to them as if it were valuable and they qualified for it. So keep that in mind. Stop selling price and savings. Sell the meaning behind price and savings. Sell the value added services with this. So those top three things, guys, are what's going to really help you. Number one, most important, follow, follow, follow your company's process. Stop making up excuses. Follow the process. You're no better or worse than anyone else, especially in this industry as an entrepreneurial type of industry, guys. You're just as good as your deal count, right? So you need to focus on yourself, focus on what you do with your customers, but focus on the tools that are given to you to make sure that you're more successful. Number one, or that's number one. Number two, 100% rapport. Please, guys, focus on more ways that you can actually have real human being conversations with your merchants. Get them to slow down. Get them to not treat you like a salesman. Okay, that's the worst thing you can do is when a customer treats you like a salesman, they need to treat you as an individual, set expectations, manage the conversation, move them through. And number three, stop focusing on price. Look at other value added services that you can provide that will build value and display all of it, all of it before you give your presentation. Thanks for tuning in guys to the Merchant Services Slayers group. Again, click on the link below to go to video four, uh, which is actually picking the right company to work with. So tune in.